conversation and if we have to get people caught up because I don't I don't think we have to go into executive session for the for the other piece, yeah. right? Yeah, right. That's a well, quick, that's a really quick yeah. kind of, hopefully really quick. I'm gonna get Chassis in the phone. I'm just gonna give her a call. Okay. Recording in progress. You there, Justin? I am. How are you doing? Good. How are you doing? Well, thank you. Do you have a new car? And I do not, but I still have three, so I'm in good standing. <laughs> Hello, Savannah. Has been forwarded to an audit. That's her answer, so she's gonna have to call. I gotta keep that clear that screen. <laughs> 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 Or dreams made illegal. <laughs> <laughs> That's the goal. Uh, uh, well, just easy. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, we got four. Where else? Okay. Um, we might as well. How about Ron, we we'll begin the conversation about the about Centerville? And you can tell us what the various. Are. Yeah, so tonight I'm, uh, I met with Mark French uh, today, and we were able to go through the damage assessment. Yep. Okay. Okay. Our preliminary damage assessment from the two storms, FEMA's right. calling it July 7 and July 9. Uh, July 9 is not closed yet, as far as I know, that's an ongoing event. And federal disasters can be one day, multiple days, weeks, Sometimes a month, if it's really bad, think of like a fire disaster, it might go for weeks or months. Um, so just real summary for people that don't see my summary, we have the two events, and then we have a third event, which was way back in Halloween of 2019. So they're all sort of jumbled up. The fix for the Halloween storm, there's two sites that remain. One is Centerville Road, south of Noise Farm Road, which is what we're talking about tonight. And the other one's Brook Road. Both of those combined are six hundred and ninety thousand dollars. Chastity's calling. Hello there. Hello. Sorry, there. Oh my blood, when you called. <laughs> <laughs> well, you should stay away from vampires. Okay, all right. We got this. We got that on the table here. Perfect. So we just started going over the uh, damage assessment for the July seven and July nine storms. Uh, specifically, there's two damages to Centerville Road, which is actually uh, from a Hall Halloween 2019. We have all the permitting and right of way to replace that culvert, uh, but we've also had two rounds of additional damage on the, on the 7th and the 9th. So part of the delay is waiting for FEMA to approve a funding increase, and that is still pending. In the interim, FEMA has advised that we open the road and put temporary repair in there. So we had Mark French, the road foreman, and Ron DeRocher, uh, who's the low bid for the uh, project, look at it and both have a feeling, I guess. Uh, Justin, can you let the waiting room in? I don't, I can't see that. It looks like Mark French. Yep, got it. Uh, both Mark and Ron feel that doing anything temporary with the way the weather is going is just going to result in another failure. FEMA said, we'll keep paying you for the temporary repairs while we work on a permanent repair. So we're kind of stuck with those options. The other option that came up is yesterday, the stream alteration engineer for the state of Vermont came up and said, looks like half the road can handle a lane. So why don't we buy the temporary traffic lights and let one lane go through at a time? With the rain keep coming and the road halfway gone, it, it really is tempting fate, really, because we can't, it, you know, how, half an hour ago, it came down really hard. And that, depending on where it lands, it could be enough to take the rest of the road. So that was one idea. Another idea came up tonight, which was a temporary bridge with the National Guard practicing on a temporary bridge. Uh, the Take the culvert out, put the stream bed back to its natural width and then put a 15 foot or 20 foot bridge span over the top. 
how that's done mechanically, that's that wouldn't that we haven't scoped that out. We haven't designed it. We haven't done anything, but that would be a temporary fix. Uh, probably at very little or no cost to the town. I think there's a rental that they might charge on the bridge if they have to rent the bridge, but I, we don't we don't do that kind of thing often. So it'd be all new. Um, the other option is keep it closed. Current condition of that road is closed uh, relatively safely for people unless they walk across during a storm event. But you know it is closed to traffic from Route 15 to Noise Farm Road. Uh, Brian from the village is here concerned about the water main. So Brian, do you have elevated concern in its condition or what is, it's a pretty long span of being unsupported pipe. It's about 20 or 20, maybe 20 feet long that's exposed, hanging, sort of hanging. <laughs> yeah, well, what we've been able to do is um, we actually replaced a uh, splice from the 2019 uh, washout, that splice was uh, a little concerning in the fact that it developed a crook in the splice that was making us very uncomfortable. We've since replaced that uh, with a longer splice, and we're comfortable that as long, you know, as long as things are right now, um, and there's no greater, you know, widening of the washout we should be okay while this is going on. However, if the washout tends to go side to side any bigger, then the concern is going to be that uh, the support that we have right now holding up the water line is, is gonna become problematic. And if that happens, um, as you guys all know, this is the main water line uh, for the entire village. So it has a substantial impact should something happen to this. Thank you, Brian. Uh, Mark, do you have any summary on your the temporary repair that FEMA's advising, which is, I think, put dirt back and cross your fingers, but I, there, there's some issues within the pipe that maybe you can let the board know about? Yeah, you hear me, Ron? Yeah, go ahead, a little bit louder if you can speak up a little. So that, the temporary, I mean, there's the hard, the hard part is stopping the erosion under that culvert. So the temporary fix, as far as maybe saying it every day, because everything we do is going to go under that culvert. Can't see how, you know, we can't stop when that, the first section of the culvert is, was ripped up, or the second section is ripped up. So the water from the first section is hitting the second section and shooting under the culvert. So I don't know how we can prevent further erosion under that culvert or even know how much erosion is under it for as it is right now. But yeah, so it, it might be ongoing erosion. It's ongoing erosion that we can't see is what you're saying. He keeps muting himself. Okay. Yeah. Um, so right now, under the the good section of what looks like a good section of road, we don't know what's under that culvert at all. Gotcha. There's there's hours. There was a huge whirlpool going under that. You know, I mean, there's a lot of volume of water went under that. Who knows what's under that section? So if you're to open the road back up the way it is now, who knows if that culvert you know drop and because we don't know what's under it. Um, so as far as the permanent fix goes, we do have a draft contract. We don't have an answer on FEMA supplemental money, which is really, it's called a cost change request that's pending at region one, which I don't know if that's in Boston or Albany. And they said that they would be reviewing it and giving, you know, either giving the approval or sending us more questions and details about why, you know, they're, they're concerned about the overrun. So they want to look at every item of the bridge and, you know, of the culvert design. I, I don't exactly know what the questions are because they haven't sent them to us, but that's that's where we're kind of stuck on that piece. Ron, the FEMA money that has been sent to take care, in theory, it was going to take care of two, of two right, the Brook Road and, and this one. How much did they, did they allocate to us? 
Uh, they, I can get those numbers. Yeah. Right. Um, it's more, put the answer to your question, it's more than center bill costs. The, right, no, right. The right, money right, obligated. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's what yeah. Okay. That's pretty short. Right. And then, and then I want to know right now what is the cost of the fix for center? Mm -hmm. The approved hey, Ron. Yeah. I got to jump off real quick. I got a call from one of the our taxpayers up in Dickens. I got to make sure the road's still there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Jump, <laughs> jump back on when you can. Okay. Um, okay. So we have 331,522 obligated. Three hundred thirty-one thousand five twenty-two. Of FEMA money. FEMA obligation for both. For both, okay. And we have a have a bit, low bid of seven forty. For both. For both. So we've asked for the difference. Right, we've asked for the difference, but it's also what's the cost of just center? Ah, uh, that's in your bid results here. It. Centerville is 408 and Brook Road is 282. That doesn't include engineering, but we're not, we're looking at construction only right now. Right. Okay. So let's see. Ron, did you say Brook Road is 282? 282, yes, 282,000 for Brook. And actually, Ron DeRocher is online. He could he could verify what the two bridges add up to because he provided the number. Hi, Ron. We haven't said hi to you yet. Okay. Right. Hi, Ron. Thanks for being there. What's what match are we doing with these? To Centerville to Centerville. Just be able to pick up the whole thing. That's the seventy five percent. So yeah. Okay. Or sorry, seventy five percent is normal. They increase it to ninety for that one storm in 2019. Okay, so we're, so for the Centerville fix, we need to pay 10% of 408, right? Uh, no, no. seven and a half percent will come from the state emergency relief, ERAF, E-R-A-F. Gotcha. Okay. So we're down to two and a half percent time cost. <laughs> so it makes it more critical to check all the boxes on the FEMA checklist. Right. So you, you go for a full circle from can't we just open the road to if you mess up your 97.5%, you could go to a 50 50 deal instead of a 97 2.5 deal. And that's why we're sort of caught in this legal, I don't know, stranglehold a little bit because you know having the road closed has pros and cons. Everybody's incurring daily costs by the drive around, but it's safe. Yeah. You, you elevate your risk and cost by doing temporary repairs that aren't quite right or putting the one lane across there at the risk of the rest of the road washing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a, I did not want to keep talking about this in my head without more people talking about it. Okay, Roland, what, what are your thoughts? Well, I can tell you my first thought, I don't want to open that back up because when I was up there, when Mark and Ryan was up there and Matt and I was up there, <clears throat> just a little rain that was happening then the road they they when they put it back they put in so much of a fine fine right. gravel right. and it just dirt? it just keeps breaking off right. and if you run track of it by there you're going to get vibration right. Right. So my, my feeling right. off the bat for that is we're not going to open at least i don't know i i agree with you uh, i walked out there a couple of times but i think but i think that when we got talking about the National Guard, that might be a good thing to make a phone call back to them to see if they could put a temporary bridge in there. That, yeah, not, definitely, definitely. That's not a bad idea. No, that'd be great if they, um, they could do it. Um, we're going to have to do it sometimes. 
Yeah, and, I, and I'm, I'm going to speak a little bit for Ron DeRocher, who's up against a, a summer construction season clock that's ticking away. Right, right. And, you know, from a business perspective, he's got slots in his calendar and time's running out. So every week that goes by without the answer on funding, it becomes more risky to the town to have that condition go through the winter. So that's the other problem. So do we talk about getting the money, growing the money? And getting that thing done and kind of crossing fingers for the grant. Yeah, then you go back to a 50-50 grant, which is still well let's something. let me let's I'm just curious, Ron, since you're there and being patient, tell us, share your thoughts about what's the best thing for us to do. We got that you're muted. Thank you. Ron, are you there? Definitely not muted, but which Ron are you looking for? <laughs> I see we got two of us. <laughs> Ron B. Ron B. B. Sorry, right, <laughs> right, right. What's your advice on this? You're asking the contractor? Contractor, Ron D, right. Okay. Um, I mean, to get it done this year, I mean, we really got to start moving because of the time it takes to get the pipe, you know, so. Four to six uh, weeks. Yeah, four to six weeks from an approved shop drawing. Um, I mean, once it's fixed, you, you, you can relieve yourself of the worry of it uh, going out again and doing another temporary repair. Um, I get the financial side of it um, that you're concerned about. Um, it, it makes sense to fix it. And right now I have the manpower and the equipment available at this moment. Um, but that could change very quickly as, we, you know, we're still bidding work almost a couple, a couple, two, three jobs a week. And kind of the way I have to operate to keep it in business, I have to, as soon as I get a contract, I go to work. And so right now that's what's holding this up. Um, I certainly think to get get it done would be a good thing. Yeah, it would. You know, there's so many unknowns underneath that existing culvert. Um, I think yeah. Matt said, mentioned that, that you know, temporary repair may be very temporary. Yeah. Um. So we don't, FEMA is just, they're going to give us an answer somewhere along the line. Yeah, they, there's no yeah. deadline. Yep, there's well, no. Since we're still waiting for money from 19, God knows when we're going to get an answer from them. So what do we have to come up with money right off the bat to get started? Well, we, what we have to do is decide, I mean, obviously we could, we could go borrow, we could, we've got enough cash ourselves to be able to, you know, to sort that out. The issue is, is here's an opportunity to have us paying two and a half percent for the cost as opposed to 50 percent of the cost so trying to trying to figure if we can squeak how to, how to do that makes sense to me how about if for to, to give us another day for information because we can talk to the guard to see if, if they would say i'll be amazed if they say yes right away they can do something but in case they do or what that would cost or when they could do it i'll um I'll reach out to our federal delegation to see if I can get them to knock on the door of region one and say, excuse me, could you expedite this? Because they're, they want to do the right thing. Um, they don't want to waste FEMA money or their money doing another temporary fix. Or, or the risk of the and, and life and safety right. issues of not having good right. temporary option here. I think that's, um, that's what's pushing the... I, I'll uh, I'll try to get through to, to Peter Welch tomorrow. I've known Peter for years. I haven't called him up and asked him for anything since he's been senator. So <laughs> time to call him. <laughs> um, and I can see if I if if they think that might be helpful. Um, I think we got to do the permanent fix. If we end up having to pay fifty percent of it, well, we pay fifty percent of it. You know, that's just like, you know, or uh, we go ahead and count on using the FEMA money for it and 
and uh, and and get forgiveness later. Uh, that's what, there's three hundred thirty one thousand, and it's four hundred eight. That would be seventy six thousand. We don't have cover, and we would hope that FEMA would give us the Brook Road later on, right? Yeah, yeah. Or if, if, and, and if we say it's okay to have used the money that way. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if, I don't want to, I can't speak for FEMA. Oh, no. That's so, not <laughs> but whatever, it's, they're, they're the, uh, call it the third party and everything. So we have us, we're trying to work with a contractor who's trying to work with us and everything. It's a FEMA project yeah. in essence. So anything that happens here, whether it's a, the temporary, they said, do whatever you need to do for temporary to get traffic on there. It'll be eligible because of the situation for the FEMA funding just like most all the temporary repair work is. Right. The hang up is they're looking at designs and spec and material and process and all the things that we did through the bid and all the little details because of, of the cost change increase. I think if the if the bid came in within a certain percentage of where FEMA thought it should come in from two years ago, which we know that's a big span of time these days, right. um, they probably would have less question because it was already obligated. You know just ballpark was uh, well there's only been one bid yeah and that was ron's right but when but what we thought i mean so well the we obligation know. amount so the obligation amount i gave you before that 331 right. is the combination of both projections from two to three years ago for both right and the whole world has changed we did no, one no, we did one 2018 for 170 very similar project so I mean, it's so basically, it's coming in double. Basic, basically, yeah. double from right. a couple of years ago to three years Which ago. I'm yeah. Sure, I can't imagine that FEMA would not be aware that that's happening. <laughs> no, but I, and I, well, I, I'm actually surprised that they are taking this long to answer what yeah. you know. They have so much information that they should be able to get to their questions quicker, but they're not doing that. So <clears throat> even if we go with the national guard like that. The temporary bridge. We're still in the, we're still in the winter here, and these other people get all these other jobs tied up. Then nobody can do it. And we're going to be. Well, now them, them trucks aren't going to go that way. They'll fly one way, turn around, and go the other way. They're going to want to go over. They're not going to go over. They, they want to go over though. Yeah. Yeah, but they don't. It'll be a they dead road. Temporary bridge. <laughs> <laughs> the long detour. Fire. The fire department might want to go over it. Yeah. But not a plow truck. Maybe know. once. <laughs> <laughs> Mark's back, Mark's back online. I I think we're still we're still kind of messing ourselves up here if we don't yeah. go with the temp uh, the permanent fix. Eventually get approvals for that because you know Mark's right, Ron's right. I don't know what's underneath that cover. I don't want to put anybody's. No. Well, know. again, you can just sort of see we we do another temporary. And somebody's driving across yeah. the other side of the room, right? Oh, wow. Pretty good. Hey, Mark. Hey, Ron. Yeah. Is, is the Deegan Road still the other, there? The Deegan Road's still there, but I guess there's a tree across Center Road, so we're headed. Um, we're tree in Center Road. Okay. Yeah. That one I called you on? No, this, oh, this is a tree across the road. Oh, tree. Know. Yeah. Um. The only thing with a temp thing too is it, like a bridge or whatever, I remember, is to protect that water line and insulate it because it'll probably be like that for the winter. That'd be yeah. one of the things to keep them on. That's not good. Not good. No. Got a lot of styrofoam. <laughs> styrofoam is not going to help that all winter long. Oh. We hear you, Brian. We hear you. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. <clears throat> How, how about, and this, and this Ron said, here's the, you're right, I don't know if the National Guard thing even works, but you're right, because we need to, we don't want to go through the winter that way. Okay. Ask for forgiveness. After. How about A, the, the one thing we definitely can do tonight is authorize me to sign the contract so that when we have some, so a final decision, and I think really the decision is, 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 uh, if I can get Senator Welch to lean on District One and say we need in a few days, you know, we need you to authorize this, 
um, then we come under the, you know, we get the great deal. And uh, if they can't do that, I think we go ahead and do it anyway. And if we have to pay 50% of it, we have to pay 50% of it. Mm -hmm. That's I, mean, I, don't, I don't really see what else are the safe yeah. things to do. I, I think the temporary creates safety issues. The delay creates the water main risk. Mm -hmm. And the funding is substantially there for Centerville. Worst case scenario, even if they approve the cost changes, you know, to, to a partial point, we might be able to say, you know, Brook Road may have to wait. You're gonna have to wait. Yeah. You know, yeah. if, 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 so unless they approve everything at once, you know, uh, Ron D, I, I know we're signing a, or looking at a contract for two projects and you have some cost efficiencies built into your bid because of that. Uh, I'm just, I'm asking, I, I'm thinking the answer is yes, but if we split the project into a 23 and then a second uh, project in 24, I'm guessing you'll want to have a new cost for us, or, or maybe not if prices are going down, I'm not sure, but you'd, you'd want to review them anyway. Are you still... Uh, holding I'd want to take a look at it. I, it, I think I mentioned it was minimal. Uh, it's more of the mobilization than anything else, moving everything up there, then having to come back to Jeffersonville, then the next spring moving back up. It, it's not a huge cost. We're not talking a lot of money, but it is costs I didn't plan on doing. I planned on doing them okay. you know, one right after the other. Okay. Um, and a, just a contract issue. I, I don't think we've engaged you with the contract yet. So if we get authorization from the board for Susan to sign on behalf of the town, I'll mail or email the contract to you for review, which is both both projects, full funding and et cetera. Mm -hmm. At some point, if the $400,000 additional request doesn't come through, um, you're going to, I guess you're going to be in a time crunch eventually. And I don't, right now you say it's okay. It could change next week where you need to get on with other business. Um, I think at that point, I, I don't know what we would, I really don't know what we do. It's a big project. So it's kind of hard to find a contractor at the last minute for the winter. Um, Are you talking about both or one? Or well, assuming everything goes through, but we don't get the money and then there's a delay. Brooklyn would last another Probably Brooke would be a fine for the winter. Yeah. That's, Using that culvert will put the guy in That's water. I mean, that's a water flow issue. It's not a right. It's not a road bed problem like right. Senegal. Right. Not yet. <laughs> not that we know. Yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, I think other other than trying what Susan's suggesting with some phone calls to accelerate the region one decision. Even if it's a partial award, any you know, any whatever they're whatever they're not responding to, it's better to get Ron DeRoche going yeah. on a project. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. If they, you know, if they're getting hung up on a ten thousand dollar issue, we'll take it off the project to accelerate their decision. Mm -hmm. Right. I think that's one of the discussions. Right. Mostly because of the water line. Secondarily, temporary is not safe based on the failed condition of the culvert, and a bridge, temporary bridge, doesn't help. You know, plowing and winter maintenance either. That's unless it's a really good temporary bridge, I guess. Could be super duty or something, but doesn't help that doesn't help the water main. Right, right. That doesn't deal with the water main. So I think that was it. Not a lot of options other than take it another step for next next Tuesday. All I gotta have is a motion for Susan to sign that. Yeah, this is yeah, this, this uh, small contract. Once we, she researches Welch. Well, that's right. We'll, we'll check it out. But then even if, if he doesn't come through, we just want to say go ahead with the go ahead with the contract anyway for Senate bill. I would. And, and give us a little, you know, a little time, space, maybe, you know, to... It's going to cost us fifty percent one way or another. Well, well, it, 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 again, it may or it may not, but I'm. Well, we ain't got I'm, I'm reaching the point where I'm comfortable saying. 
Do just it. go ahead and do it and we'll figure out the money. Oh, I'll, 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 I'll agree to that one. With you? Yeah. I mean, we might as well, we've got them up here and and, and take and it. We're gonna, and because who knows what big projects will right, affect right. the way we're going, right? right. You know? And, um, and again, it's going to take him a while to get going. And uh, I don't have to tell FEMA that we started tonight, do we? <laughs> no, no, but you know, it's one of the, it, what I found from the 2019 storm is they will find out all the little details of how projects get done and who's given approvals. So it's better as a two step process to yeah. maybe push region one. Yeah. Is for us to talk to the Vermont FEMA office people that are our liaison to region one first. Okay. And, okay. and talk to them and tell them the dilemma and why we think we should go ahead with the project. And then, and, then and, what they think we and, should do. And, right. And they and they, I asked them once that, and they said, do the temporary until you, until we get through all the region one stuff. <clears throat> but what well, if you can't do a temporary yeah. and winter's coming? So yeah. we, didn't, we didn't get to that step yet. Yeah, that's right. Well, and, and I mean, we since know now that the, that the second culvert, that we don't know what's happening. Second half the whole is, okay. the is under my mm -hmm. When we have no way of So that would be my suggestion because even then they might, they can't give the final approval, but they've done this before. Yeah. And they might be able to give us that option that we didn't think about yet. Right. Oh, there's form 72-2 for accelerating region one. You didn't fill that out yet. Yeah, right. <laughs> or the part where Sheldon drives to Boston and starts screaming at him. Yeah. Right? <laughs> All right. Well, Brian, it was good to hear that you're okay for now. Yes, we are for now. But obviously, I'm very concerned that however long that this is going to go on um, raises the potential exposure uh, for, for this water line. And obviously, if you can help keep me informed as to what's going on, I would appreciate it. Um, and and um, Madam Chair, uh, I'd also like to reach out to um, contacts that I have within Welch's office to help bolster the argument. Ah, okay. All right. I'll chat with you and we'll gang up on Peter. <laughs> <laughs> Works just fine for me. <laughs> Thank you. Peter and I were in the Senate together, so we, we have a long history of life. Yeah, well, he was also my attorney that wrote my first uh, will. Yeah, there we go. Okay, well, all right. We got a dead center here, Brian. <laughs> okay, I will check in with you tomorrow, um, and, we'll, and we'll come up and maybe just coordinate a phone call to his office. Sounds great. So then at least he'll know what's going on and what we're trying to do, and that'll kind of give him a heads up. And we'll see how far we get. I'll talk with the local FEMA, with the Vermont FEMA folks tomorrow as well, and um, see where we go from there. Yeah. Now, I did reach out to the FEMA folks as well and a variety of sources. I have yet to get anybody to call me back to indicate as to whether or not we could get any cost recovery for the work that we've already done. So I'm counting on the fact that we probably won't. So you know, our work is hopefully done as much as as need be. But, you know, obviously, like I said, if this lingers on this, you know, and the, and the erosion gets worse, um, that could introduce a whole new set of problems. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Got a plan. So, all right. So the plan is we're going to move to let me sign the contract. But do we want to go ahead now and say, all right, our intent is to is to is, is to have the contractor do both projects this year. That's our intent. Doesn't mean that's where we end up, but then we got to get the Centerville, you know, road. <clears throat> the Centerville, the 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 one on the Brook Road. Yeah, right. The contracts for both, correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess the I guess well, we, how it goes with the phone call tomorrow. Right. Yeah, yeah. And, and what FEMA tells us, Ron, this Ron, Ron contractor, does that work all right for you? We know we're going to do Centerville, the, the Brook Road. No, we're no, going to do Centerville. Centerville. Well, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 I've been listening to this Brook go past my house for so long. I'm like, Brook. It depends on how the phone call goes tomorrow. We'll right. probably do both. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but but we know we're doing the. We know we're going to take care of the water line issue. 
Right, right, for sure. 100%. So does that work for you to know you've got one and by the end of the week, we will know if you have two or not? Yeah. <clears throat> Certainly it works for me, absolutely. Okay. Uh, at least do Centerville and depending on the weather and how Centerville is going to take a little while. It's uh, that water main creates uh, uh, a little bit more difficulty for that one versus Brook Road. Right. Okay. Okay. We're, we're definitely going to have you do that one this year. And it's, it's, it's our issue how much is federal money, state money, and town money. But we're dead. It's, it's got to get done and the sooner the better. plan is, okay. there, is there a vote there yeah yeah we need to so what we need is that is a motion and then we will vote we'll make a motion that after you talk to peter welch <clears throat> and see what he says we are definitely going to do the centerville road 100 percent with the water problem there with the village and then we'll look at it to do the brook road if b if right. we have to you know um we have to pay 50% of the Centerville Road. I mean, it depends on how the FEMA comes out and everything comes out. I mean, yeah, I don't, you know, okay. I don't know. Let's, 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 do let's take it in steps. Go, yeah. you know, let's go for the original plan and then get bounced, bounced off that. Definitely do this. Yeah. Center, uh, silver, um, Center, Center, Centerville. Centerville Road, for sure. The color of my house. <laughs> the red barn. By Hill Street. Yeah. <laughs> By Hill Street. I know what the um, E911 number is there at uh, Mark's old trailer. Or Mark's trailer. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, that's. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> and for you to sign the contract. Right. right. You know, for for that? Yeah. To sign the contract. Right. I'll second it. So, with that approval to sign. The contract for Centerville Road and Brook and the Brook Road part is pending conversation with Peter Welch. No, no. But we can do that because right. tomorrow Susan and Ron are going to know one yeah. way or yeah. the other. Yeah, we'll know. Yeah, yeah. Yes. contract for both of right. them. Right, but but the contractor understands that the second one may get done next year. Right. <laughs> okay, contract for both. Uh, just, yeah, yeah, Justin, the contract's seven hundred and forty thousand. Oh, we just want. Okay. See what yeah. phone call comes in. Right. We'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, all in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. So on that, I'm going to send that to Ron for review, and then we'll. You don't need to sign that today. Right, no, that's your sure. copy, but he's got to look at it first. <laughs> Most Morris, of it is the did vote. Stuff. We did vote. You're good. Yep. All right. Thank you. That's right. Yeah, you're there. Um, Can you hear us, Matt? I'm I'm hearing loud and clear. I'm a, I'm in agreement with everything so far. Okay. Thank you. Obviously, I think Ron's going to have a task right now. Just hopefully the water goes down for him for the install anyways. I think that's the biggest challenge he's going to have, other than, like you said, procuring the pipe to get the contract in, then he can get the shops to us and hopefully get the pipe procured anyway. So. Get everything moved in. Yeah. 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 Water's still high for construction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't think you're doing well. <laughs> Yeah. Um, God, thank you, folks. Appreciate it. Take care. Have a good evening. Brian. Love Brian. Love Brian. Yeah. Um, who is Mark? Are you there? No, he's gone. He's gone. No, he's been on. Yeah, I'm here. Okay. No, I just wondered if there's anything you want to update us on, or just everything's okay. Never um, we're all right now we're plugging away. Okay. Okay. It doesn't again. It doesn't. I think we're good for right now. For right now. Well, that's all anybody can do right now. I decided I I drove to Cambridge today. Um. 
where that water was is truly astonishing. And just driving all along the Royal River and seeing it in the fields and and the, you know and how all along the the, the riverbanks. I mean, it's not just clear. I mean, tree everything is just wet. You know, and how high the mud is is just. We went through Hardwick yesterday, and that was just amazing. Yeah. Kind of been that way. Yeah. Uh, Mark, just yeah. just just the conversation. To first of all, our roads have held up very well for the situation. I said that to Ron the other day. I think we're we're pretty fortunate as a town, really, realistically. I think you guys have done well. Um, just a question, totally, maybe it's ignorance. At what point do we start looking at saying winter's coming and this might be a problem? You know, like obviously up at Centerville Road, up by um, by show, show vans. By show vans. That you know, we're hopefully going to address I'm, tomorrow. I'm, right. Okay. I've only driven a thirty percent of the town. I just didn't know if yeah. you know. No, it's just really we got some ditching to do there. We got some you know shoulder to work due to there. Uh, McKinstry Hill and the bigger one's going to be is the digging as far as setting ledge rock up to there. Mm -hmm. And then probably once we once we see uh, what Chris Burnell says on the twenty seventh, I believe it is. Then we'll probably hire out for that Collins Pond culvert. Garfield. Seeing what he says, we got to do there on Garfield Road. Okay. The outlet for Collins Pond. What's that do? Collins Pond. Colbert. Coming across to Garfield Road. Yeah. Washed out. Yeah, undersized, so percolated, percolated and took the road. Yeah. That culvert separated under the road. Yeah. A steel culvert. Okay. Um, I I would say that and uh, and uh, Mark the night that it really poured, um, Mark made which I, what I'm sure which was not an easy decision, but he kept everybody in. And they worked the roads all night. And I'm sure by being proactive that way, they saved all kinds of roads and culverts and, you know, and a, and a lot of money for taxpayers, you know, because they were able to, to stop things before they happened because they just stayed out all night and did that. I expect there may be a few other towns that wish they had done that as well, but it was like, I'm sure that's not, a, you know, yeah. Do you do it or do you wait and you come in at three o'clock in the morning or do you wait and see what happens? And so, so it's, it's, you know, our, we, uh, we were, we were fortunate, but we've got, we've got a really good road crew and they've taken good care of the roads and preventative work that's been done, you know, over the years. And I think really, I think mostly really the, the Morristown roads held up well too. You haven't been related much. No, no, you know, so. So communities that have been doing some good proactive work, their their roads did okay. I think maybe after a lot of Johnson's roads did okay. It was you know it's the water that took out bridges and has destroyed everything as opposed to you know I'm I'm always amazed in Morristown when you go down to if you go down to the Avery's you go down to Metal. It's it amazes me that that road is there that that road didn't vanish in that in that water. I mean there was so much water. It's a big white span there. Yeah. So, yeah. So. Plus, down there at Thomason, as they drenched that out a few times. Oh, okay. Before oh, so the that's dam. Why. Before the dam. Cody had it in there, drenched it out here a few years ago. You don't remember that? <laughs> no, no. That's 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 what they've got to do. They've got to start getting into these streams, and rivers, and stuff, and drenching them out, or they're going to right. See the amount of dirt that's coming down through it. Anyway, okay. Um, now, what do you kind of dealt with that? Uh, thank you, Mark. We need to go into executive session for just a minute to deal with to do a technicality on something that I forgot at the last meeting. Not that I will forget it the next meeting. But you need a motion to go into executive session. Uh, so, um, yeah. Pen pending litigation. Yeah, pending litigation. 
Um, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. Let's get out of it. Motion to adjourn. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you.